So as you might know, we have this video on how to use generalized linear models in R. And we specifically focus on the, the popular cases of logistic regression analysis and Poisson regression. But when we do this, we encounter this, this family argument in the GLM function. So recall that if you would fit a normal ordinary linear regression in R, you would have the LM function and you would just specify the formula where you say what the independent and dependent variables are and you specify the data. So that's nice and simple and clean. But then when you use generalized linear models, they also ask you for this, this family argument. And then they nicely describe to you that the family is uh, basically the error distribution and the link function to be used in the model. And this, if you're not familiar with generalized linear models, this might be a bit confusing. So in the tutorial, we showed that if you want to use um, a logistic regression analysis, you would use the binomial family. And by default, the binomial family uses a logit link. And that is what defines a logistic regression. Similarly, um, instead of using binomial, if you want to use a Poisson regression, you would use a Poisson link, a, a Poisson family with a log link function. And then maybe if you do a regression with a binomial dependent variable, but now you're um, in your field, they don't really use logistic regression, but they use probit regression, which is a common alternative, then you might want to use a probit link function. And again, if you're not familiar with generalized linear models, this might all seem a bit strange. But that really is a big shame because this family part of the GLM function is really what's at the heart of generalized linear models and what makes these models, well, so what makes them generalized and that's what makes them so powerful and useful. So in this video, what I wanted to do is to try to help you develop a bit more of an intuition for what this family argument here entails. So basically describing what this error distribution is here and what this link function is. So generalized linear models, as the name very aptly describes, are a generalization of the, the classic ordinary linear models that you know. So to describe what a generalization means, let's start with a quick recap of what the ordinary regression was all about. So this, as you know, is a technique for modeling the linear relation between a dependent variable and one or multiple independent variables. So if you would have data like this, where you would have an x independent variable and a y dependent variable, and you would see some relation like this, then typically you would say, well, there's clearly some kind of relation and we can model it by doing something along these lines. We can say, well, um, we have an intercept, this one over here, and for the x value, we have a, a coefficient, which makes a slope. And then we say this green line here is basically a prediction that we can make, that if we know that the x value is four, then the y value is expected to be something along these lines. Now, of course, we know that this is just a prediction that is not perfect. So if we want to truly describe these points in our data based on this model, we have to include an error term. So for example, say that this blue dot here, which corresponds to this blue Y here, is a specific uh, Y value observed in our data. And the corresponding X value for this Y value is this, which is 7.5-ish or something. Then for this point, our prediction would have been here, but our prediction is slightly off. We need to add some value to get the real value. And that what we need to add is the error term, the error, the mistake, the, the part where our prediction is incorrect, so to say. So the value of this model then is that it helps us say something about the relation between X and Y. If this prediction is very good, and we need, uh, there's very little error in our model, meaning that most of the dots are indeed close to this line or on this line, then we can indeed say that there is some kind of relation between X and Y. So the cool part of learning statistics is that you see this and you see all these possibilities and you think, wow, this is a really, really useful tool. And then the sad part about learning statistics is that they tell you, well, yes, this is a very useful tool, but you can only use it in certain occasions. There are many assumptions that need to be met for you to actually be able to use this method properly. So first they'll tell you that the relation between X and Y needs to be linear. So it needs to be a straight line, so to say. And then they'll drop the difficult term of homoscedasticity, which means that the distribution of the error around this prediction, so how these uh, dots 
are distant from the, the green line, that this distribution should be the same for different values of x. And that it shouldn't be the case, for instance, that the distribution is small here, or the variance, I should say, is small here, and then that it increases as x gets larger. And third, we have uh, the independence assumption, which basically means that all these individual observations need to be independent. And then finally, we have the normality assumption, which basically means that the distribution of uh, the observations around the prediction is assumed to be normally distributed. So that's basically the we expect more dots to be close to this green line, and then the farther we get away from this green line, the, the, the probability of observation should decrease um, according to a normal distribution. So initially you might think, well, I mean, that's a bummer, but not too much of a problem. I'll just test these assumptions and get it over with. But then you'll find out that many of the data sets that you will encounter, actually for these data sets, these assumptions are violated. So you can't properly use the method here. And that kind of sucks because now you learned this cool new method and it turns out that you can apply it in these cases. So for example, one thing that you will often encounter is cases where your dependent variable is binary, where it just has the values 0 and 1. And then it's no longer straightforward how you can just fit a straight line through this. And you also see that the distribution of the error is not normal, and heteroscedacity, so homoscedacity, no longer really makes a lot of sense in this kind of data. Another example is a Poisson distributed data, where you see that, um, well, basically here you might be tempted to draw a line through it. But if you look closely, you see that it actually curves upward. And also you see that here at the start, the, the, the variance of the error is still small, but then as X increases, it actually becomes larger. So it's not homoscedastic, it's heteroscedastic. And so this brings us to the argument that uh, generalized linear models are your friends. Because basically the idea is that by generalizing these ordinary linear uh, models, we can relax some of these assumptions. So for example, if we have data with a binary dependent variable, we can fit the logistic regression model. So here we see that the line is curved. And this is actually what happens because of that logit link function that we mentioned earlier. And it's actually still a linear model, but we'll show how that works in a minute. And you also see that here the, the error distribution that we already observed is not really normal. Now, instead of using a normal distribution, we actually use the binomial distribution. So then it does make sense. And below here, we can actually use a Poisson regression, which does take this, this upward curl into account. And uh, if you look at these blue lines on the sides, these are indicating for the, the error distribution, you see that it actually models that as x increases, the error variance also increases. So you can actually, well, deal with these assumptions in still a linear model, but then using this generalized format. So now let's look at why GLM can actually generalize uh, LMs so that we can use different error distributions and what the role of the link function is in this generalization. So to do this, um, let's first rewrite this formula slightly. Uh, to also make it explicit that we're using a normal distribution uh, for the error. So first let's distinguish that we have a systematic component. So that's this prediction here. And it's systematic because we basically have one clear fixed prediction. And then secondly, we have the error component, which is about how the actual observation is different from our systematic uh, prediction. So we can now rewrite these as follows. So here we say that for the systematic components, we have this linear uh, prediction, which we here call mu. And mu is um, basically the expected value of y for a given value of x. So here if x is 2, then mu, which is on this green line here, is about 3.5. So the expected value of y is 3.5. And now the random component tells us that the real value of y is drawn from a normal distribution where the expected value, so here with the mean of the normal distribution, is mu. So here we say that if x is 2, we expect y to be 3.5, but the real value of y is drawn from a normal distribution where 3.5 is the mean. And by the way, uh, normally, of course, this normal distribution would also include a standard deviation, but we omitted that here for sake of simplicity. 
So now from this form, uh, we can go to the actual generalization. So here we see that in the generalized linear model, um, where in the classical linear model, we would always use a normal distribution. In the generalized linear model, we can use, well, any distribution from the exponential family. So we can, for instance, use binomial, Poisson, but also gamma. And the idea, of course, is that um, we again want to somehow link this random component to the systematic component, and the systematic component should still be linear. Now in the classical model, this link was very straightforward. We can just take this expected value and use it as the mean of the normal distribution. But this is not always possible for any type of distribution. For example, imagine that the distribution is the binomial. Then the value that we plug in for the binomial actually has to be a value between zero and one, which is problematic because the value of mu can range from minus infinity to infinity. So simply put, if we have, um, if we allow our distribution to be more than just a normal distribution, we need to have some kind of way of making sure that the systematic component produces a number that we can use as a parameter in the distribution. And this, as you might now already have expected, is where our link function comes in. So the link function is the function that ensures that the number produced by the systematic component is actually something that makes sense to be used in this distribution. So now here we are. We now see that the distribution that we could choose in the GLM function, uh, which could be binomial or Poisson, is basically sp stating which distribution we want to use from the exponential family. And the link function is the function that we use to make sure that the number produced by the systematic component can actually be used in this distribution and also make sense to be used in this distribution. So now the beauty of this generalization is that we can now use the idea of this classical linear model, but in many more cases. So again, we can relax the assumptions that we had before and well, basically model more stuff. So logistic regression, for example, um, and as we mentioned at the start of this video, use a binomial error distribution family. And then to get the parameter mu here, we use the logit link function. And notice by the way that logit is just the inverse of the logistic function. So by, uh, that is also what the name logistic regression comes from. And by making this transformation, we actually make sure that mu is squeezed for, to a value between zero and one, which is also what you see in this plot. Where you see that this transformation is the result of applying that link function. So it approaches, but never quite reaches one and zero. So now we can make more combinations uh, of the error distribution and the link function. Note, of course, you can't use every link function for every um, error distribution because the binomial, for instance, needs to have a mu which is bounded between zero and one. But an alternative that you could use here instead of logit is probit, which is then the, the also commonly used probit regression for a binary dependent variable. And then if you would say want to do a Poisson regression, you would just use the Poisson error distribution. And in this case, you would need to use the log link function. And notice, by the way, that um, every error distribution has a canonical link function. So for the Poisson distribution, the log is the canonical link function. And for the binomial distribution, the canonical link function is the logit. And this is also what you see if in R you use just the function. The default is always this canonical link function. And binomial canonical link function is the logit. So that's also why if you use the family in GLM, you just need to type binomial and you don't actually necessarily need to specify the link, but still it's, it's good to know where this link comes from and to know that sometimes it makes sense to play around with it. And then as a final example, uh, because there are many more examples that we could give of different families that we could use. But here, uh, let's say that we're just going to make a normal ordinary linear regression model. Because of course, this is a generalized approach, right? We can still do the original thing that it generalizes. In this case, this just means that we're using the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. And in this case, the link function is just the identity. So it just means that the eta that we get from the systematic components is just identical to the mu. Because again, here we just produce the expected value, which is the mean of the Gaussian distribution. So with that, I hope to have helped you just a little bit in getting 
a bit more sense about what this family argument in the GLM function is all about. So if you're interested in all the other family stuff that you could use here, all the other options, note that there's a help page for family that just gives you the different um, error distributions and link functions. So here we see the binomial logit link for logistic regression, uh, Poisson for Poisson regression, etc. And to be fair, you're probably not going to use all of them or even that many. Um, I actually don't. For me, the main reason of looking into this was mainly that, well, I just don't feel terribly comfortable making any kind of conclusions if I just don't really understand all the stuff I'm putting into my statistical functions. And I mean, if you're stuck around long enough to finish this video, I'm going to assume you have similar concerns. So on that note, one final thing to note is, of course, this doesn't tell everything about generalized linear models. It, for instance, also generalizes how to think about residuals um, if we have a binomial distribution. Uh, a great book here would be Generalized Linear Models from Müller, McCulloch and Nelder, which is more or less the Bible on this topic. I'll put a link in the description. Um, so with that, um, I hope to, uh, that this was interesting to you. Thanks.